Yeah, Coach. Um, year 50. Yeah. Is, it, <laughs> is this year 50? 50th. Yeah, my 50th season. Does it, I mean, Ooh, does it feel like 50? Nope. What does it feel like? 49. <laughs> 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 no, I don't. It's, 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 it feels great. It feels great. Are you a coach? Pardon? Did they get you a cake or anything? I mean, is there something no, you said? No, no, no. Gold, gold, 50th gold anniversary? Did you get uh, a, a watch? A watch? Yeah. Nope. Is that 50 including high school or is that? That's 50. Oh, okay. Yeah, high school, college, everything. Yeah. Like. A lot of years. <laughs> a lot of football. When you wake up, like, in all seriousness, when you wake up, like, do you, like does that hit you at some point? Like, no, not until really somebody kind of mentions it once in a while or something. But no, I really don't think about it. I really don't. It, it feels like yesterday. Does it still feel like as much fun as it always has? Absolutely. I had just as much fun this spring in an OTAs and training camp as I've ever had. I, I really love this football team, love this defensive guys that are, that are playing for us. And, and uh, no, I, this is as rewarding a spring as I've ever had. You've heard a lot from, from some of these players about how tight the group is, even going back to May. Is, is that something that like you have felt, and how can that kind of chemistry maybe kind of help this team be you know, well, one, of, one of 11? I have felt it, how it helps the chemistry, you know, how it helps, I, I, who knows? You know, that's one thing about having done it this long. There's times you think you're going to really be good and you're not as good as you think, and sometimes you don't think so. I'm sure Cincinnati, I remember I talked to a couple guys on their staff a year ago, and they thought they'd get fired <laughs> going into the year. They were worried about getting fired, and here they end up in the Super Bowl. You never know. In this league, year to year, it's just it can be from top to bottom. I thought one of the toughest teams we played last year was Detroit. I loved to watch the way they played. I thought they played hard, lost a bunch of close games. I thought they were a really good football team. You know, record didn't indicate it, but I thought they were a really good team. You just never know. But back to your original question is, is yeah, I, I feel it with these guys. Uh, I think there's a good chemistry there with them. I think they like playing together, feel like they're together. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. How do you feel, I know, back at the start of training camp, you talked very passionately about that you didn't want a defense that was poor or mediocre. How do you feel about your defense now having gone through camp? Well, you know, again, I don't know how we'll be statistically. You know, I, 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 but when I said that, it's like, you know, people made a bigger deal. Out of, doesn't, doesn't everybody want to be a top 10 defense? I mean, that, isn't that what your goal is? It's like I just, but the point was is that I don't want us to just settle for being okay. Uh, yeah, we played good. It's like, I don't, it's not okay that you just go out there and line up in the right spot and read your keys. It's that you go make a play. After you do that, you go make plays. It's, it's not enough to just, that's what I was really talking about and alluding to. And just don't make your expectations high. Why, why wouldn't you? Why, who wants to be just average or below average, certainly? Um, you want to be the best it can be. You know, and I alluded to Baltimore and, and New England. It's just because that's – and Tennessee and, and all three of them. The guys, the expectations were great on defense, and they played that way. I don't know if we were any more talented than any other team, but I think there's just certain expectations, and, and uh, that's what we should have. And I feel like these guys have them. Now, if we can live up to it, you know, we, we got to – the, the proof is in going out there on the field and doing it, and just saying it and talking about it. We got to now actually go out there and we got to do it. So, but like I say, I've had really had a fun spring, really had a fun fall camp with these guys, and fun is in terms of not just me camaraderie. It's it's feeling good about the guys and the way they played and the passion they're playing with and trying to learn and do the right things and all that kind of stuff. That's what makes you makes it fun for a coach. Is the guys are coachable. Do you anticipate things maybe changing or not changing with Sean not being there in college plays? Who? With oh, with Sean? Yeah. Oh, how long is it? Uh, they, they've been together for so long. I mean, yeah. it. He'll. everybody always has their own tweak to whatever it is, but I, I still think it, the, the crux of their offense isn't going to probably change a whole lot. I mean, he's not going to all of a sudden become a run-and-shoot guy or something, so it's going to be – 
it'll be similar. I'm sure he'll have his little things that probably over the years he's always wanted to do but couldn't maybe. And so, you know, that we're all coordinators. We're kind of like that. We always have this little stuff in the back that, hey, I've always wanted to do this, so now I'm going to do it. But, you know, I, those guys have bought into a system down there. They've been very successful with that system. Why wouldn't you keep the same system? Did you have a call from the box last year? Yeah, did I? Yeah. Yes. You were on the sideline a couple times this preseason. Mm -hmm. Is that a change for you, or do you do that in the preseason? I've, done it, I've done it every place I've been. I was, in the preseason, you're on the field? No, I, no, it had nothing to do with preseason. Okay. It had to do with um, – I did both at New England. I did both at Baltimore. Uh, I was up at Tennessee, um, but um, here I was up last year. It really has to do with um, the information that you can receive from upstairs. And if it's if you can get good, quick information, you, you like to be down because you can talk to the players quicker and, and as they're coming off the field and, you, and you're kind of into the game a little bit down there. But it's just as good upstairs. It's 50-50. It's calmer up there. You don't have everybody talking to you, yelling. The fan, You can't really hear the fans and stuff like that. So it's pretty quiet. But it really all is based on information. If you, you got to get information fast. If you're on the sideline, you got to get it and get it in. I mean, you got basically 10 seconds to make a call, sometimes not even that. So if you're not getting information fast, then you got to do it upstairs because then you can see everything. You aren't listening to anything else, and you can make the call faster. It, but so we tried it in the preseason to see because we got a couple uh, new guys up there, and so it went great. And so I really feel comfortable with it. So I'm probably going to stay down. Who's giving you the calls from upstairs? There's there's three guys up there, so I'm not going to mention one guy. They all three have input into it. So. Coach, over the years, I'm sure you faced Jameis before. What kind of things does he present, and has he improved his game? Well, the thing about him is that, that he's um, got a very, very strong arm. He's, he's accurate at times. Uh, he can have his, his moments, but he, he's got a strong, strong arm. Um, I think he's really improved in reading coverages and stuff like that over the years. Also, the system, I think, at New Orleans is beneficial to him to sometimes to what it's been in other places. The other thing is that he has hurt people with his feet. You know, he's been mobile. He's not only mobile, he's a big dude. You know, it's not like Roethlisberger wasn't no, he wasn't mobile, he was nifty. I always said because he can make you miss, but he was hard to bring down even when you hit him. And so, and, and Jameis is a little bit the same way. He's a big guy. And like I say, I've seen him scramble and, and hurt people. And I have gone against him over the years. And, and he can put the ball in there now on you. So, uh, you know, he's a, certainly a big threat. you feel like that you've got a good sample size through preseason with guys kind of coming in and out, not all your starters playing? Uh, not always, but that's kind of the way it is. You, no matter kind of who you play that first game, if, if they got a seasoned vet back there at quarterback, he's not going to play a whole lot. So you never really see those guys in preseason very much. It's, this is all based on what he did really last year. I mean, he played one series against uh, last week, right, in uh, preseason. So this is really based on last year and past history of him. Defense. I mean, do you feel good that your defense got enough snaps in preseason kind of together? Yeah, I do. Because I thought last year we didn't, some of the guys didn't get a lot of snaps prior to the first game. I thought we've got a few more snaps in this year, at least in the first and second uh, games. You know, we got in a, like a quarter or maybe not even a quarter, some of them. But they got some snaps in and I felt good about it. The other thing that, that I think helped too this year uh, from that standpoint is since we went against the Jets and Jacksonville during the week, those were all snaps that you're going against their number ones, you know, down in, down out. For more than a quarter, you're going through a whole practice. So, I mean, we went against a couple, you know, good quarterbacks, Flacco, uh, you know, hell of a quarterback, and, and at Jacksonville, the same thing. I mean, we've, we went against good people that were on the other team and not necessarily our scheme, going against our same guys all the time. So, uh, so I feel like, yeah, uh, hey, hey, we got no excuse. We got to go out there and we got to, it's time to play. Going back to working for down on the field, is some of that due to having so many new faces and younger players too this year versus no, last it's year? Really, it's really more about the staff than it is about the team, the players. There's goods and bads, like I said, to both. It, being down, 
you're around the players, you can kind of get a feel for them coming off the field if they're hanging their head, they're feeling good, they're pumped up. You get a little bit of a feel that way um, where you don't get in the booth, but then in the booth it's nice and calm and quiet to call the game as opposed to the chaos sometimes down there on the field and everybody kind of yelling and talking. Uh, it, it's really more about getting information. What is the best way to call the game? What is the best way to get the fastest call in to let these guys get lined up? Because if you're late getting calls in, that puts everybody just in a little panic mode that a call got in late, they're lining up, I got to figure out the formation. You want to get it in as fast as you can, what's the best way to do that? And we have a very veteran staff, you know, as position coaches, so that's good. The other thing is, is that sometimes when you want to talk to players, like if you're upstairs, you know, you know, I got to say, hey, Michael, get uh, uh, Foyer on the phone for me. Well, then you got to go get the phone. He's got to get on the phone. And meanwhile, I also wanted to talk to Michael Walker. Well, now I get done with Foyer, I haven't got time to talk to Michael Walker. Well, now, as Foyer is what, or somebody like that is walking off the field, Rashawn Evans is walking off, I can talk to Rashawn, and I can go right over and talk to Michael. I can go. So it's sometimes a little better, too, for me in that, in that regard. Who you call plays into this year? Pardon? Who you call plays into this year? Michael, Michael Walker. Mm -hmm. They, they, you know, all those guys have um, the ability to do it. You, you know, you can only have one on the field at a time. But if Michael wasn't in there, I mean, Rashawn can do it. We've got some. They all have the ability to do it. You just got to change their helmets out. You got to designate who, who it's going to be before the game starts. Do you have to give them a list? You have to give them a list. You have like yeah, three, four guys. Three, I think we get three. three. You get three guys that you can do it, and you and you designate who it's going to be. They just can never have the dot on at the same time. So if Michael was out of the game because he broke a shoelace or something, you could give Rashawn a new helmet and he's got one with a dot on it. And then as soon as Michael comes back in, Rashawn's got to put the other helmet back on. So, you, but you have to designate before the game starts who those three people would be. Um, how do you feel about that revamped linebacker core, Lorenzo and the two inside guys, and then all? I like them. I like them all. I like them all. I, I'm. Very comfortable with them. They they are really dug in and studied the stuff. And and uh, there's no, there's nobody I'm not satisfied with. I think we got a good young core. I mean it's it's a young group, and there's going to be growing pains like there is with everybody. But I I sure like the way they're practicing, the way they're playing, the way they're preparing. Um, we just got to go out now, and we got to see what we got, and and work through the bugs, and and get it going. Coaching guys who are playing in their first NFL game, do you have to coach against the emotion and the adrenaline of being out of position by being outrageous? How do you? I think what you got to do is, is I think you, you, you just got to, in some ways, um, start them out with not, not making it real difficult. In other words, it, try to try to put them in a position where they got kind of one thing to think about, not a bunch of things to think about in their first snap. Uh, there's been times in the past, uh, even with veterans, uh, I can remember Tennessee one time, um, somebody was out for a snap and we had to put in a backup and I blitzed him just because that's all he had to do was <laughs> blitz. He didn't have to think about coverage, didn't have to think about reading scheme, didn't have to think about anything. I blitzed him because I knew he's going to be wired up anyhow to go, so I just sent him and, and it turned out pretty good. So it's just you try to make it as easy on them and simple on them as it, it can be because it, it's not they, they get, they're trying to think it too much and you make it too hard on them. I've learned that, you know, I learned that the very first uh, Super Bowl I was ever at with Coach Belichick and it, obviously it wasn't his first and, and I remember him talking to the team about when you go out for pregame, you know, it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's going to be hyped beyond belief. You know, don't exert all your energy in pregame and before the game ever starts, and then the game starts and you're out there hyperventilating because you, you know you you're. And you know what? It was, that was experience, and so I, I kind of carried that over into other things too because that was really true. When we played, I saw the other team out there jumping around and going 100 mile an hour and doing that stuff, and we were like business as usual, and went out there and won it. And and everybody, their team looked spent in the second half where our team wasn't spent in the second half. And I thought that's great, great coaching point. And it kind of goes not only to a Super Bowl, but just kind of in general sometimes. You, you know the guy's going to be hyper, so try to settle them down, trying to do things a little more simple for him. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
So, like, as you're installing your scheme for some of these younger guys, and you're you're giving them everything, but maybe are you scheming and assigning assigning them smaller packages of things? No, they they, they don't know it all because they I don't want to you know I, I felt kind of like last year sometimes that I just wanted to call some things sometimes and didn't call some things that I wanted to call and and I thought you know I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do that again uh, I'm not gonna go through that again I'm gonna we're going to have our stuff ready to go. I'm just saying that maybe on the very first play, yeah. I might, that they're in there, I might not try to make it as difficult on them. But they got to know it, because if not, I don't want to be hamstrung and, and handcuffed in a way that, oh, I can't call this because so-and-so is in game. And these guys know that, and I've made that very clear in the offseason. You know, you, you're preparing to go in there and play, and we shouldn't have to not be able to call something because you don't know how to do it. That that's not fair to the team. It's not fair to the, to the organization. It's not fair to the fans. It's not fair to anybody. We need to be able to call what we need to call when we need to call it. And it's your job. You're a pro. You know, it just said you wouldn't ask the coach to say, "Well, we can't." He can't teach this aspect of something, you know. You, hey, if we put it in. You got to coach it. You got to teach your guys how to do it. You wouldn't say, "Wow, this coach is young. He can't really do it." No, and he shouldn't be hired. It's the same way. If a guy if a guy can't do it, then he shouldn't be playing. So, you know, we're we got it in, and we're ready to play it.